Hawaii uh, is a very unique place, and um, there are more endangered species uh, here in the islands than um, virtually any other place on the planet, and uh, that's why it's so important that we um, do everything that we can to uh, keep invasive species out of our communities. We do know what a devastating impact uh, they can have on our environment. Well, I, I would just like to uh, add our thanks to everyone who's working so hard uh, to control invasive species. I mean, you, you're, you're out there in the field, you're uh, mapping it out, you're figuring out what's, what's, what's coming at us fast and furious and trying to get at it before it spreads, you're trying to control things that have already started to spread. And uh, it's vital to Hawaii's way of life and economy. And so I just want to extend <coughs> our deepest thanks for all of your work on it. And uh, we're very, very proud of all you've accomplished. <laughs> Governor, I would like to take the opportunity to thank everyone here in this room. The work that we need to do statewide on invasive species will only get done with the working with the invasive species councils and with all the, the outstanding contributions of the people in this room. It's the only way we move forward. And the work that you've asked us to do on the Invasive Species Authority folds all of these stakeholders in, so we'll do that work together. So along with Chair Case and the Governor, I thank you all for your contributions. Thank you. Thank you. I just would like to add one thing. You know, I just returned from Washington, D.C. and uh, the National Governors Association. And in conjunction with that, I had the opportunity to uh, speak with Secretary Jewell at the U.S. Department of the Interior, as well as officials in the, um, in the office of the White House, um, as, as well as um, in the State Department. And I just want uh, to let you know that all of the work uh, done in Hawaii uh, has captured the collective awareness of those at the federal level as well. So I just wanted to extend uh, my congratulations and thank all of you, uh, each and every one of you, for your part uh, in our effort to keep invasive species um, f out of the state of Hawaii. You know, on behalf of um, the Kauai delegation, uh, Senate President Kochi, Rep Tokioka really wanted to be here, but um, they have a conflict in schedule. Uh, we want to thank all of you folks for taking the precious time out of your day to really recognize special people that really serve on the front line in protecting our environment. So with that being said, uh, for the Koi MVP, we'd like to recognize Trey Bernard. I wanted to point out, um, you know, the Hawaii, Hawaii Invasive Species Council recognizes Trey Menard for his efforts to protect watershed areas and control the spread of invasive species on the island of Kauai. And as part of his role as the Director for Forest Conservation with the Hawaii Nature Conservancy, Trey plays an extremely active role in controlling invasive species in the upper watersheds of Kauai. He also coordinates the Kauai Watershed Alliance and has a successful record of partnering with public and private landowners to achieve large-scale conservation efforts. In 2015, Trey utilized new technology from high-resolution imaging and helicopter-based plant control to combat the spread of Australian tree fern in the Wainiha Preserve and further protect and restore the Alaka'i region on Kauai. So on behalf of the Kauai delegation and everybody, congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Trey Menard, and I am the Director of Forest Conservation for the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii. I'm based on Kauai, and uh, we've been battling invasive species on Kauai for many years. Uh, this award is very, very humbling, and, uh, and, and I'm very honored to receive it. Uh, it's been a long slog battling an Australian tree fern and other weeds in our watershed, and uh, this is uh, just some great recognition for the hard work that our, that our partners have been doing. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, we recognize um, J.B. Friday, Flint Hughes, and Lisa Keith for their efforts regarding the combat and research of rapid Ohia death. This dedicated team of individuals has been working diligently to address rapid Ohia death, 
ROD have made great efforts to explain and update conservation professionals and the community about this serious issue. Their research of ROD continues to yield more information and identify management challenges that the team is leading head on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Keith. I'm a plant pathologist with Ag Research Service um, in Hilo. And today, um, on behalf of myself and Dr. J.B. Friday of the University of Hawaii CTAR uh, Cooperative Extension and Dr. Flint Hughes of USDA Forest Service, we received the Greatest Hit Award on the uh, work we've been doing with Rapid Ohia Death. Uh, also known as um, Ceratocystis wilt of Ohia. Um, this invasive fungus really found a new host that was very susceptible. Um, this type of, um, I guess, work, um, boy, it's really the challenge of what uh, the results can be from something introduced into a new area. Uh, typically when an organism like a fungus kind of coexists with a host, um, you know, you may have plant disease, but you don't tend to see it to the degree like we're seeing it with rapid ohia death. Unfortunately, with invasive species like this fungus uh, comes in, um, happens to find the right environment, a new very susceptible host, and you start to see um, major problems like we're seeing with ohia. And so um, working on this, really, the challenge of figuring out um, the biology of the organism, um, what it's doing to its host, uh, hopefully we can get a better understanding of it, what it is precisely, um, what it's similar to maybe elsewhere in the world, and what we can do to really minimize spread, uh, prevent um, the spread into precious areas that it's not already, particularly on the Big Island of Hawaii, and especially stop the spread to um, other native forests throughout the state of Hawaii. The first award is our community hero, and that is Kay Hao. And Kay, if you could please come up. So Kay, uh, the Hawaii Invasive Species Council recognizes Kay Howe for her dedication to increase public awareness and education on the dangers of rat lung worm disease. Kay has worked tirelessly to research rat lung worm disease and educated the community about the perils of this disease and the invasive nematodes that cause it. She demonstrated that nematodes can survive for a long time in water as in catchment tanks and they can pass through two micron filters alerting the community to the risks of, it, of contacting it from water. Through a recent GoFundMe campaign, Help Stamp Out Rat Lung Worm, Kay began a program to educate students at five K-12 schools on Hawaii Island. Through education, students can learn how to avoid and prevent rat lung worm disease. The students then become educators for their families and communities on the dangers and prevention of rat, uh, rat lung worm disease. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Aloha, my name is Kay Hao. I am uh, from the Hawaii Island. I work with uh, rat lung worm disease, which is a, a troubling disease here in Hawaii, um, affecting quite a number of people, it seems. Um, the invasive species involved in the, the disease involves uh, our rat populations and invasive slugs and snails. Um, and then of course the parasite itself is an invasive, all coming from Southeast Asia, most of these guys other than the rat. Um, it's important to me because uh, my life was personally affected by this when my son was infected in 2008, December of 2008 went into a coma from the disease, spent four months in the hospital, was never expected to recover. I left my profession as an educator and consultant to help him recover. Uh, we've been very grateful for his progress, which is incomplete, but he has made progress. And I became the hotline for rat lungworm victims or families of victims 
who would call me and ask me for advice. And I really became troubled after about a year. Um, why was there no education evident? Why was there no evident research going on about a, a problem that could have such devastating impacts? So I actually returned to school. I became a student. Dr. Susan Jarvie is my advisor now. I'm a student in the Tropical Conservation Biology and Environmental Science program. And we have been working on this disease for the last four years. Um, why is the award? <coughs> the award to me is, uh, I had David Bowie's song playing, you know, the community hero, you know, who, we can be heroes just for one day. And it, it's been a long road. It's been a difficult road. Um, financially, there has not been a lot of support for this research because so little is known about it. Um, there appears to be not many cases when in reality there are many more cases than we're aware of here. So professionally, to the award um, to me means that we're making some progress in addressing this really important issue for Hawaii. If we really want to be food secure here, um, start growing more food here, um, becoming more green and more sustainable, which includes the use of rainwater catchment tanks, this is a foodborne, waterborne disease, and it really needs to be addressed now. It is taking a big toll on those that are getting it. Um, many people don't return to work ever again, or their lives are just changed, and it's never the same again. So, Hi, aloha. My name is Dr. Sue Jarvie. I am a professor and department chair of pharmaceutical sciences at the Daniel K. Inouye College of Pharmacy. And prior to 2011, um, I had heard about rat lungworm disease, but when you look on the websites, the CDC, Department of Health, it makes it sound flu-like and, and fairly uncomplicated. And then I met Kay and her son Graham at an international rat lungworm meeting held here um, on, on Oahu in 2011, and I realized how, how devastating this disease could be. And I had to wonder, like Kay did, why wasn't anything being done about it? And so we started the Hawaii Island Rat Lungworm Working Group at that point in time, and now we have probably 20 members or so. Most of them are volunteer, and we run two basic uh, projects out of our out of our lab. One is an educational based project and uh, public information, public education, and Kay is is uh, pretty much heading heading that up. And then we have a lot of other uh, research projects going on right now. Um, some of them involve trying to find the rat lungworm hot spots on the island by using a molecular test to detect and quantify the amount of larvae that are in uh, a slug or a snail. Uh, we've run a vaccine trial, um, uh, working with a collaborator in Spain. Um, unfortunately, the vaccine doesn't seem to be effective uh, in, in uh, stopping the parasite from reproducing in the rat host. Uh, we ran another rat trial in conjunction with USDA APHIS that uh, demonstrated that we can in fact detect uh, rat lungworm DNA in the blood of rats at certain points in time and we're going to try to do this in humans as, as well. We're currently running a trial uh, to, to estimate the prevalence of exposure of humans in East Hawaii to rat lungworm uh, disease based on, and using antibody-based tests. So I, I'm happy to say we now have uh, antibody-based tests that I think are are reliable and we're just in the process of some uh, summarizing <clears throat> that data right now. Our second award is a Hawaii Island MVP award and this goes out to Judith who? Judith? So the Hawaii Invasive Species Council rec recognizes Judith Hu for her outstanding community efforts and her work controlling invasive species on Hawaii Island. Judy has worked tirelessly to address invasive species issues plaguing residents of Hawaiian Paradise Park. Hit hard by falling abesia, Hawaiian Paradise Park also suffers from infestations of cokey frogs and little fire ants impacting the lives of its 12,000 residents. Judy is the first to bring the Big Island Invasive Species Committee Community Empowerment Program 
for albizi control to Hawaiian Paradise Park. By working to promote training and workshops and support residents in getting the resources they need to address problem trees in their neighborhoods. Judy works on these issues as a volunteer and commits her own time and money to support her community and addressing invasive species that threaten the health and well-being of her neighbors. Thank you so much. Hey, aloha, I'm Judy Hool from the Big Island of Hawaii. I live in Puna and I do a lot of community volunteering work. I, um, I work with the Big Island Invasive Species Committee to uh, help control the, uh, the invasive species of the albizias and the fire ants, koki frogs, um, and uh, we're, we're responsible for the first workshops to be set up uh, in the communities and um, that's pretty much what I've been doing for uh, quite a while now but after Azel that's really when we stepped in and we have a lot of participation now because we realize how serious the situation was. For over three weeks some of our residents were without power, they lost their food, uh, they were trapped on their streets and uh, this was such a serious concern for our citizens that I stepped in and I realized somebody's got to take a leadership role and organize the communities. And it's not just for Hawaiian Paradise Park where I live, but I also share what I do with all of Puna. You know, I want to thank you uh, on behalf of the state of Hawaii and all the people because, and the, the um, Hawaiian Basis Species Council because your initiative to stop the shipment of uh, Mojia from the Big Island to other islands uh, has really helped probably stop the spread of rapid Mojia death in Hawaii to the other islands. Um, there's going to be a great effort to do this in the future, um, but your initiative to do it on your own was probably one of the greatest things that stopped the spread in the very beginning. Uh, we want to honor you, thank Young Brothers for that initiative, and. Um, for that foresight. Uh, I think all of Hawaii will recognize uh, that because we don't have rapid or good death on the other islands yet. So thank you so much. A small little token from the Hawaii Basin Species Council as well as a proclamation uh, expressing our thanks for this leadership. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Nathan. Kapule, the safety and environmental manager for Young Brothers. Been with the company uh, close to a dozen years, and <clears throat> we've received award, an award, uh, Hawaii Invasive Species, for the efforts that we've put forth in controlling e efforts in uh, minimizing the transport of invasive species inter-island. And, and the importance of our efforts is to one, first understand how the invasive species can affect each island. Being born and raised here uh, in the state of Hawaii, we value our environment. We value the ocean. We value the forests. We value the community. And so if we can make an effort in reducing <coughs> the effects of the invasive species and the transport of invasive species, and educating our employees as well as our customers, I think we're moving towards the success of reducing <clears throat> exposure and potential damages that invasive species have. For example, uh, the koki frogs. Uh, another thing we deal with is nettle caterpillars, berry borer, beetles, um, the lung disease, uh, slugs. Um, <clears throat> and so we work closely with the Department of Ag in assuring that we maintain clear communication in efforts. And so I think that has developed our method of success in one, having an avenue to then share not only with our community and our employees, but <clears throat> within the company so that when we do recognize the potential for an invasive species, we have a method of one, capturing and addressing the potential spread or even allowing us to send back to the origin of where it began and oftentimes it is the big island but again i mean being here uh, in this venue and to receive the awards 
uh, we want to thank the Hawaii Invasive Species for that opportunity. You know, we want to thank you for developing that and for helping, especially in East Maui, um, how that has impacted our invasive species control. Uh, I think it's a revolutionary um, way of, of dealing with invasive species and something that uh, can be replicated in many other parts of the world if, uh, and, and the U.S. So, you know, on behalf of the Hawaii Invasive Species Council, I want to say thank you and all of the people of Hawaii. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My name is James Leary and I'm a faculty member with the University of Hawaii. I'm a specialist in research and extension and my specialty is in invasive plant species management. I'm stationed on Maui and I've had the pleasure of working with the Maui Invasive Species Committee as a partner in dealing with some of our worst invasive species uh, on the island. We focus a lot of our effort on controlling Myconia calvescens in the East Maui watershed and to facilitate better progress uh, in our management, we developed a technology called herbicide ballistic technology, which is the encapsulation of small amounts of herbicide into 68 caliber projectiles or paintballs. And with that, we're able to deliver uh, pesticide payload to individual plants with a very surgical method of application, and it's proving to be highly effective and highly efficient. So economically, uh, it's a very effective uh, process. Also. Uh, environmentally, a very small footprint on the landscape, really delivering our energy to the plants that we're trying to remove them from the landscape. The hottest pest report. <laughs> the Hawaii Invasive Species Council recognizes Laura Hugh for her efforts relating to reporting and stopping the spread of the giant day gecko. As a proactive community member, Laura promptly reported sightings of the giant day gecko to the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Her diligent reporting of an invasive pest species clearly demonstrates the success of the 643 pest reporting system and highlights how the community how the community can personally take actions to protect Hawaii. So congratulations. This is for you. Hi, I'm Laura Hugh. Um, I got the hottest pest report award and the award is important to me. Well, basically, um, that I'm just happy that the Department of Agriculture came out and caught these lizards in from our yard so that they won't spread and I hope that no one else has these problems that we do have and I hope that other citizens of Hawaii will also use um, the hotline or call the Department of Ag to catch any invasive species. The Hawaii Invasive Species Council recognizes Paul Zwang for his outstanding leadership and cooperation in regards to controlling invasive species on the island of Oahu. Paul Zwang has been controlling invasive plant species and restoring native forest at his 1,440-acre property at Waikane Valley since 2010. Paul has, a, has an infectious enthusiasm for habitat restoration and fr freely shares his passion with the many volunteers that he coordinates. The Ohule Hule Forest Conservancy, which Paul founded, is an active member of the Ko'olau Mountains Watershed Partnership. Paul is also a founding member of the Oahu Weed Working Group, an alliance of land management agencies which aims to increase greater continuity of invasive weed control on the island of Oahu. Paul sets a wonderful example for other landowners to be actively engaged in invasive species control. Aloha, my name is Paul Zwang, and today I was awarded the uh, Oahu MVP award uh, for doing uh, for efforts towards um, helping control invasive uh, species which are hurting uh, Hawaii's native environmental forests. Um, I'm really pleased and humbled to receive this award. Um, to me this uh, uh, award um, helps to uh, show that the work that we're doing in Waikani on the windward side of uh, the Ko'olau Mountains in Oahu uh, that is being recognized by the state and others and that uh, the, the work that myself and the volunteers are contributing uh, day in and day out um, uh, is being uh, you know, recognized for being of value uh, to the forest and, and to our community. So it's a real pleasure uh, on behalf of all the volunteers at Waikani to receive this award.